Hello, I'll be giving a presentation about our paper Audio-Based Auto Tagging with Contextual Tags for Music. In this paper, we try to predict the context tags for music using the audio content. Contexts are very important in music. Different contexts require different music. This shows in the different playlists that the users create. For example, two different playlists, one for summer and one for rainy days. We can imagine there are two different kinds or styles of music exist in, the, in, these, two different in these two different playlists. However, for certain contexts, it's not very clear what, what would the user um, would like to listen to while biking. It's highly user dependent. Hence, contexts change music preferences, and certain songs are suitable for certain contexts. The contributions we have in this paper is, we try to collect a data set that is highly, with high confidence of the uh, tracks and their contextual tags. We have a baseline for the evaluation of uh, the auto-tagging model. Uh, on our data set and finally we have a weighted loss for the missing negative labels that we encountered in the data set as I will go on. The motivation for doing this is <coughs> having contextual tags for users can help in creating targeted playlists for a specific user in a specific context. Additionally, we can have more interpretable recommendation of why a specific uh, track is being recommended in a specific time or in a specific context. And finally, we would understand the importance of different contexts uh, that uh, relate to different users. This is not a very new problem. There has been previous work on uh, contexts in music in general and contexts in music recomm in recommendation systems in general. Um, most of the previous studies on music contexts were very limited with the set of contexts and they, wide and they vary widely from one study to the other. Some uh, were concerned with cognitive studies of the relationship between the context and music, and others were uh, focusing on the recommendation part of the, uh, of the music, the recommendation systems, by creating uh, recommendation systems for specific locations, activities, time, weather, or using the sensor data of the phone. However, most of these uh, works never focused on the link between the audio content and the different contexts. Predicting uh, the tags in general using the audio is a, a popular problem called audio auto-tagging and there has been several uh, work on uh, audio auto-tagging for different tags. However, in the previous work, there was no specific data set for contexts with contextual tags and the current data sets and all tags that uh, were trained uh, with the different data sets has no distinction between the context and non-contextual tags. Why is it important to treat contexts differently? Because contexts are highly user dependent, unlike other tags, and we would eventually need to consider the user when we are tagging each track uh, for a specific context. In general, the goal we want to have is having an audio tagging model <coughs> where given a track using the audio content, we can predict if this track is suitable for a specific context or not. This is the current uh, uh, model that we, or the current procedure that we're doing here but ideally we would also would like to include the user in uh, in this auto tagging procedure in the current work we didn't include the user yet however training such a model we would need a, a data set with the contextual tags which was not available so we would like to collect a data set with different audio tracks uh, their uh, corresponding tags so how do we link between the audio or how do we create a playlist with contextual uh, tags for different tracks? We rely on using the playlists. First, we start with a set of contextual keywords from the literature uh, that uh, were used in different studies. For example, uh, these contexts could include uh, party music, running, workout, relaxing. Uh, we look up all the synonyms and the hashtags that appear frequently with this uh, initial set of keywords on Twitter and filter the non-contextual keywords. Finally, we limited this study to the 15 most frequent uh, contextual keywords in the Deezer catalog. And these are the 15 contextual keywords. They include time, location, activity, and mood. We move on uh, from uh, this uh, set of keywords by fetching all the playlists that include one or more of these contextual keywords. And we remove all the playlists where a single artist or an album is made up, uh, made up uh, more than a quarter of the tracks in the playlist. Uh, to make sure that there is no overlap between an artist or uh, an album title and uh, a contextual keyword. Finally, we fetch all the tracks that appeared in at least three contextual uh, playlists from the same context, meaning that if a track appeared in 
three different playlists that include the same contextual keyword, we will consider this track correctly labeled with this context. To illustrate, for example, if we have uh, if we fetched all our playlists and we have track X, track X uh, appeared in five different playlists that included the keyword gym, three different playlists that include the keyword running, and one playlist that include the keyword work. We would tag this uh, track X with gym running but not work. This is to have high confidence in our uh, tags when uh, collecting the data sets. Once we collected the data set, there was high, high unbalance between the different uh, labels uh, due to the popularity of certain classes. So uh, we balanced the data set by limiting the number of instances for each class to 20,000 track, which is the smallest class. This is a multi-label data set, so the number of tracks doesn't fit exactly 20k, but the variance between the number of tracks of different um, contexts is not very unbalanced. Finally, we collected a set of around 50,000 tracks labeled with 15 contextual tags uh, and an average of 7.2 labels per sample. We looked up uh, the concurrences of the tracks between the different uh, contexts uh, to look up kind of patterns and to have an intuition if this procedure of collecting the playlists makes sense. We found that there are some relationships that make sense. For example, the music uh, that are tagged with club and sleep overlap very little together, which makes sense. Dance and party overlap a lot, makes sense. Relax, sad and sleep overlap a lot compared to other contexts. This indicates the relationship between contexts and the correlation between different contexts is a key uh, indication of the um, correction of our la our labeling uh, procedure. Finally, we move on into an auto-tagging uh, procedure. We want to train an auto-tagging model uh, to predict using the audio content, uh, the different tags. We rely on using a standard uh, auto-tagging model from the literature, which is a four-layer convolutional neural network applied on the mill spectrogram of the uh, tracks. We trained the model on our new dataset to uh, evaluate uh, how much we can predict the context tags using the audio content. Uh, we looked up the results of our uh, auto-tagging model and we found some interesting relationships. We found that some uh, contexts are much easier to predict using the audio content than others. For example, party and sad were quite easy to predict while others were harder to predict. Our interpretation is some of these contexts really require much uh, inf more information about the user uh, information because party and set perhaps the music style is very uh, similar between different uh, users while the music we would like to listen to in, in, a, in a car uh, or in work maybe rely a lot on, uh, on the user itself and in some cases for example night we would require more information about what exactly is the activity or what is the context uh, details when we are working with, uh, with some of the contexts. Uh, one key problem we had while working with this uh, auto-tagging model and data set is we have a lot of missing negative labels. It means that we have high confidence in our positive labels, but we have low confidence in a negative label. If a, uh, if a track showed up in a specific context, that's because it does fit because it showed in multiple playlists, but if it doesn't, uh, if it's not tagged with this context, that doesn't necessarily mean it's a false, it's a negative label. It could be just, it didn't show in these playlists that we had, but it would fit this context. So to work with the missing negative labels, we had to um, look up the multi-label classification of the missing labels problem. It's a common problem with multiple solutions which usually rely on using the correlation between labels to indicate if this is if this negative uh, label is an actually true negative label or a missing one. The problem with most of the previous work was they are not simply integratable in cases where we have a predefined model. We want to use the auto-tagging model that was proven uh, to be working good with audio, uh, but it's not simply, it's not easy to fix this uh, missing labels problem when we are using a predefined model. So we proposed using a weighted loss function to account for the missing labels in our problem. Basically, we uh, we propose to uh, adjust the original cross entropy loss function. This is the original cross entropy loss functions where we have two terms. One of them account for the loss if it's a positive labels and one for the negative label. Uh, what we propose is adding a weighting factor for both of uh, these two terms. This is a, a positive weight, uh, a weight for the positive label. Uh, and this is a weight for uh, the negative label. It's based on our confidence in this ground truth. 
In our case, we focus mainly on the negative label because in our data set we have missing negative labels but not really missing positive labels. We propose uh, computing these uh, negative weights based on the co-occurrences between labels. So the probability of uh, having a true negative label depends on the complete vector of uh, the labels that are associated with this uh, track. So if this track occurs a lot, uh, if this context occurs a lot with all the tags that show up in this track, it's probably a false negative. And uh, if not, then it's probably a true uh, negative. When we are computing this probability, we have two uh, options. We can either ignore the zeros because they are missing. So we don't want to rely on the missing negative labels to compute the missing negative labels, which we refer to ignore zeros. So we only use the positive labels in the sample to compute uh, the probability that this is a missing negative label. And we can use all of them, uh, uh, the whole um, label, uh, the, all, all of the labels to compute this uh, missing label, which we refer to as exact match. Additionally, we tried to compute uh, a positive weight just to uh, verify the effect of using a positive weight. And in this case, we uh, propose using the TFIDF for the positive labels, which means that for certain tracks, if uh, this context, uh, if this track shows a lot in this context, but not the others, uh, it means that this track is very associated with this context. Otherwise, it could be just a popular track that shows up in all of the different contexts. So we want to give more uh, weight for the uh, tracks that are influential in this context. We looked up uh, the evaluation results after applying our weighted loss, and we observed that using specific weight schemes improve the results in terms of predicting more uh, of the uh, true positives, so the recall. Uh, however, it definitely affects the true negative ratios because what we are doing is we are accounting more for the positive label, uh, more uh, we are giving more weight to uh, the negative, uh, the positive labels than the negative labels. So it pushes the model to predicting more positives. It leads to higher recall and the varying drops in the true negative rates due to that. <laughs> however, this evaluation is. Um, basically tested on a data set with missing negative labels. So it was not very clear the effect of using the negative labels on uh, uh, the weighted loss on, uh, on the prediction results. We followed this up by a um, study where we applied it to a complete data set where we create artificial missing labels. Uh, and you can look up uh, more of the results on our ICMR paper. Um, Finally, the future direction for this work would be to work more on the context definition and, the uh, and build a taxonomy of the different contexts that we can work with and integrate the user in, the prediction uh, in, in this prediction process to make the auto tagger more user personalized and to understand the influential versus trivial contexts, which means some contexts are more important. Uh, some contexts have a uniform music style uh, between different users, while other contexts really highly depend on the user or may more or less um, reflect the user's own preferences. Thank you.